Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. Before I start today, I have to apologize for my erratic upload schedule. I don't know how this fall is treating you, but around here, we are just getting pounded on by storm after storm. And I live out in the boondocks, to say the least. The only signal, literally, the only signal that I can get from anything is through a satellite. And, well, atmospheric conditions have to be right for the satellite to actually work correctly, and that's the only way I can get internet. So, I get cut off from the world every once in a while. And the last little bit, it's been more than every once in a while. So, hence my erratic upload schedule. Sorry about that. But, I've been sitting on this story for, well, almost a week now. At least five days. And I realize I come up with this stuff because I poke my nose into things which no one else would, in their sane mind, actually poke their nose into. But I just had to talk about this because it seems to support the things that I'm talking about all the time. And what it is, is a job posting from Marvel Comics for an editorial internship position for the spring of 2019. Now, if there's two things that I've harped on for the last, I don't know, six months or more, it's that number one, the problem, well, one of the main problems with most comic books right now, and especially Marvel, is that their editorial is garbage. That's one of their main problems. You have everybody in there trying to be politically correct, and there's no such thing as a politically correct editor. That's an oxymoron. As one of my brilliant subscribers actually put it, a politically correct editor is known as a censor. I would say that you know, like 75% of the job of an editor is to step on people's toes. If you got to be politically correct all the time and not step on people's toes, you can't be a good editor. Because you got to get in people's faces and say, this is garbage, get it out. And I would say also that editors in companies like this would be the one to tie your creative people with your accounting department. That is to say, accounting would look at the numbers and say, we're not doing so well. And then they would go to the editors and say, listen, get these guys to shape up. And then it would be the editor's job to make sure that happened. So, again, poor editing, I would say, would be one of the major reasons why Marvel is failing right now. And the other companies as well. And the other thing I have said is that Marvel's internship program, I don't know about the others, but certainly Marvel's, just appears to be a political ideology test. That's all it is. Because Disney and Marvel are always on about, well, we don't discriminate against anyone. Well, no, they don't discriminate against anyone in their hiring practices because they don't actually hire people. What they do is they get interns who don't actually work for them because they don't give them money. And they put them through this little political ideology test. And so they make sure that they're a far leftist to get into being promoted to a job which they're looking to fill. And then you just move up the ladder from there and go up and up and up into the internal workings of Marvel, if you ever want to go that far. So, if anyone actually is interested in this, I'm going to read the entire job posting here. And I'm going to comment on it. Oh, am I going to comment on it after I finish reading this? But I'm going to read the whole thing, because it deserves to be read. So, it says, Editorial Intern, Spring 2019. Location, New York, New York, United States. Business, Marvel Entertainment. Date posted, November 12th, 2018. Now, here's the job summary. Interns in Marvel's editorial department have the opportunity to act as an apprentice on tasks directly related to comic book production. Like most office interns, they perform some clerical duties, such as filing and shredding sensitive documents, but they also format scripts, collect references, and perform research for editors to send to artists and writers, checking lettering drafts for corrections, and write recap pages. Those that show interest and diligence are also given opportunities to review colors, review line art for balloon placement, and share their thoughts about scripts. And then it moves on to responsibilities. Here are the responsibilities. Editorial interns should be ready to scan papers to PDF, transcribe notes, or read stories prior to their publication to ensure there are no errors in clarity. 
The intern is an additional set of eyes for the book to pass under before going to the printer. Time management and task prioritization are also essential since editorial interns work with multiple editors. Interns are responsible for organizing their day and for seeking out places and times when their assistance is needed. Basic Qualifications Students of all years, majors, and backgrounds are encouraged to apply. There are no creative qualifications. However, experience in narrative-based, published, or performed media is preferred, and editorial experience is desirable. Familiarity with Microsoft Office Suite is a must. All candidates must be eligible to work in the U.S. All candidates must be at least 18 years old. All candidates must be available during the months of January through May. All candidates must provide their own housing and transportation for the duration of the internship. All candidates must be able to have a consistent, reliable work schedule throughout the season. Preferred Qualifications Resume must outline other internships, degrees earned, work experience, related clubs and organizations, current major course of study, expected graduation date, and extracurricular activities. Cover letter must include a personal introduction and days slash times available during internship period. Preferred junior or senior level standing. Cumulative GPA, a 3.0 or higher. Required education. Currently enrolled in a bachelor's degree program by arrival date. All right, so after that, it just gives you a little blurb on Marvel and then a little blurb on Walt Disney. Now, I got to ask a bunch of questions here. This just, this is why Marvel is failing. Again, this is an example of why Marvel is failing. First of all, now this may just be me. This one is just me spitballing. I don't really know exactly what's going on with this, but I got to ask this question still. Why in the world does this person need to be in New York? To do this job. Sure, if they want someone who's a gopher, yeah, that's fine. But if they're actually doing editorial work, and it seems like they actually get to do editorial work, then why do they need to be in New York? I mean, isn't everything done on computer now? I would look for someone who actually has computer experience so that he could actually have more experience than, what is it, Microsoft Office Suite? It's, that's all they wanted? Really? I don't know. I don't understand why this person needs to be in New York, but hey, maybe that's just me not quite understanding all the things that go into this job. But why do they need someone who is going to university, college, university? Why do they need someone like that? Because right there, you're picking someone who has divided loyalties. Everyone that they will look at for this job must either be enrolled in university or going to start university in the next term. These people have divided loyalties. Their time, the massive amount of their time, needs to go somewhere else, not towards Marvel. Why in the world would you be looking for these people? I mean, I know it's been a while since I've been to university, but really, has it changed that much? I mean, you study, that's it. I mean, I'll give you what, what? I had a professor, right? He used to get up at the front of every class at the first of the year, because I had him for a number of classes. And every year, he would say the same thing. He would say, listen, if you have another responsibility besides coming to university and actually studying, if you have, let's say, a child, or if you have a job, or if you have some people in your family that you've got to look after, leave this room now. Get out of my class, because you will not be able to keep up. Pure and simple. That's the way university is, is it not? That's the way university was when I was in university. You know, things like March break, it wasn't actually a break. You would get your professors give you a pile of books and say, this is reading week. Finish all these books before you come back. You are like a monk in a little cell. All you do is study. You don't have time for a job. So let's say things have loosened up a little bit. Still, they got divided loyalties, right? The massive amount of their time needs to go to university. So why would you pick these people? specifically to be the basis of what you are looking for. It makes no sense to me. I mean, sure, you want to get people who work for free, look for students. But why these people? Traditionally, 
if you have a business that is doing something like this, you know, that works with science fiction, fantasy kind of stuff, there's a really good basis of people who will work for free for you just waiting there. You know, if you're producing movies or comic books or television or card games like Magic the Gathering or anything like that, where do you go to get interns for free? Where do you go to get free labor? You go to fanboys or fangirls. I mean, these are people without divided loyalties, right? If you're just looking for someone who is looking for experience, then go to these people. Because not only will they work for free, but they will come in early and do extra working for free. They would eat, breathe, and sleep Marvel Comics if they could. They would pitch a little tent in the side of their cubicle so they wouldn't have to go home. And they would say to everybody, I work for Marvel Comics. But no, a university, I would say, the people who were actually in university and get this job, they will have to lie to their friends that they actually have this job. All right? Why? Because smart people don't read comics. Now, let me repeat that. I was a person who went to university and read comics, so I think that smart people certainly can read comics. There is certainly enough in there for smart people to read, but for other smart people who don't read comics, their mindset is, Smart people don't read comics. And these people are in university with a bunch of other people who don't read comics. And so I could just picture this guy who got this job and he's sitting there in his university class and saying, hey, I got to go to work. And his friends look at him and say, what do you do for work? And if his answer was, I work for Marvel Comics, they would look at him and say, seriously, dude, seriously, you read comic books? I thought you were smart. That's what his friends would say. So he would probably have to lie and say, I just work for Marvel. And they would be very excited and say, oh, do you work on the movies? Can you get to see other stuff? He would be embarrassed. In order to save face, he would have to lie about working for Marvel Comics because the people who go to university who don't read comic books think that people who read comic books are just a bunch of drooling idiots. And he would have to save face. But you could get fanboys who would scream it out to the world. I work for Marvel Comics. And he wouldn't care who in the world heard. He would just try to get it out there as much as possible. You got free work from the fanboy, you know, coming in early. These other people, they're in university. They got to study. They got to prepare for studying. They got to prepare for what they're going to do when the classes start. You know, they have divided loyalties. They would probably have to hide the fact that they work at Marvel Comics. This is ridiculous. Why would you get such people? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. They should be looking for people with qualifications, not people who have a university degree or are going to have a university degree pretty soon, because that's what they're looking for. I mean, the basic qualifications here on this thing are not even, they're non-existent. I mean, you have to be familiar with Microsoft Office Suite, really? You have to be at least 18 years old, eligible to work in the United States. I mean, there are no basic qualifications here. I mean, you either meet these or you don't. It's nothing about skill whatsoever. And their preferred qualifications, they have a little bit in there about maybe you would like comics because you have some work experience, related club organizations, you know. But then they also stick in, you have to put in your major course of study when you're expected to graduate. You have to have a GPA of 3.0 or higher. They would prefer juniors or seniors. They're specifically looking for people who are in university. So... You see, they're not looking for qualifications here. They're not looking for someone with actual skill. They're looking for someone who has entered university, which is just a far leftist mill. That's all that they're doing. I mean, look, they're already probably going to pull this person out of New York or New Jersey, one or the other. Those are both pretty liberal places. And on top of that, you're going to be enrolled in university, which, I mean, very diverse people go into university and they usually all come out the same way a fairly far leftist, because the numbers of your professors are usually 10 to 1, if not 20 to 1, in favor of liberals over conservatives. So, yeah, this whole thing is set up just as a purity test. I mean, you're on the East Coast, you got to be there physically, so check, you're probably going to be liberal. You're going into university, check, you're probably more left-leaning than liberal. So, they already got you by the scruff of the neck, they know exactly what kind of person you're likely to be, and then you have to put in a personal letter. What in the world do they need a personal letter for? I've run a business. I've hired people. 
I don't give a sweet flying fig what your personal preferences are. I want to know if you have experience. I want to know if you can do the job right. I want to know if you're actually excited. This is just the same thing that you would do to get into university. But let's move on from that to talk about the editorial things that these people get to do. Now, keep in mind, these people will just be interns. And yet, they get to double check all of the work. They will format scripts. They will collect references and perform research for the editors to send out to the artists and the writers. They will check lettering drafts for corrections. They will write recaps. What is the first page of every Marvel comic is? It's a recap. And those who show diligence will have opportunities to review colors, to review line art, basic balloon placement, share their thoughts about the script. If these are the jobs that they're giving to people who they don't pay, interns, imagine what the junior editors are doing. Well, they'll be doing all the actual editing work. All of the actual editing. This is why you got ridiculous things in Marvel Comics. This is why you get balloon placements on top of the art, which make no sense, besides the fact that they got this giant monologue in every panel, which, of course, the actual editor should have pared down, but they don't. What is the editor actually doing? If he's giving all of this work to interns and people who are underneath him, I'd say if there are junior editors, you know, a step above the intern where they actually get paid, but they're not actually the editor, these people are probably doing most of the work. And of course, we've already seen, they have no experience. They just can go to university for a couple of years. That's all the experience they seem to need. This is why the editorial is failing. I'm sure the person who actually has his name on editor of the book, all they're doing is trying to hold everything down. All they're doing is making sure everyone passes in their work on time. All the other actual editorial work is being done by people who are either interns who are not getting paid or people who are getting paid very little and who are never going to get their name on the book. People who, if they go up this ladder, don't have experience or at the very least, their experience is with people who don't know what they're doing. Because seriously, I mean, I've worked with a number of editors and for a good editor, you want to know how much a good editor actually makes? A good editor actually makes a lot of money. Why? Because they have to go slow with things. No, but if you have editors at Marvel having to deal with this much work so that they have to give most of this stuff which an editor should be doing to an intern, then they got no time at all. An editor needs to have time to actually make sure things are correct and they get paid well for it. I mean, a good editor, I'll say a good editor, gets, I would say, at least $50 an hour. At the very least, the freelance ones do. And do you think any of these people, if they get bumped up from being an intern to actually being a sort of junior editor, are going to make $50 an hour? I don't think so. The only people who are making $50 an hour are that funny little man who actually says, I hate money, and people like him who are at the top and don't appear to do any actual editing because his books are garbage. And it seems like he's pushing all the work on people like this. People like this intern. Because if this intern gets to actually determine where the balloons are placed, gets actually to review the line art and review the colors and share their thoughts on the script and do all of this other stuff, like I said, this is why their editorial department is failing. You have people going into the internship who don't have proper experience. They get offered a job and move up the ladder to a paid position, but since they didn't have experience to begin with, they either just developed bad habits of editing and did what Marvel told them to do, which is not good editing. You can see it in each and every one of their books. And then you get the garbage that's being pumped out. This, this little thing, this little job posting is why Marvel is failing. They're not looking for people. I mean, from the very bottom up, this is an internship, right? From the very bottom, all the way up. They're not looking for people with qualifications. They're looking for people who actually fit qualifications, which seem to be nothing more than a political ideology test. And they're learning bad habits and they're getting work pushed on them that they're not ready for and that they don't have experience for. This is not a sane way to publish anything. This just simply shows with this little job posting why Marvel is failing. Garbage in, garbage out. Pretty much that simple. 
Anyway, if I've given you anything new to think about, hit like. Hit the shield on the lower right-hand corner of your screen to subscribe. And leave me a comment. Give me something new to think about. Let's share our ideas and hopefully use those ideas to make comics better. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.